I was pair programming with a good friend the other day. We both ran into the same trouble. How do forward refs work? We remembered we needed it, but couldn't remember exactly how the syntax worked and kind of how the whole system fit together. So what I did is I hit the books and I said, I'm gonna figure this thing out. So afterwards I went and studied it out and here's the result of that study. We're gonna think through how React works itself, why we need refs in the first place, and then where forward refs fit into the picture. I think what you'll find is that for pretty much every component, you're gonna to want to forward refs here and there once you understand exactly how they work. Let's jump in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. So before we jump straight into Forward Ref, we need to remember how React works behind the scenes. If you want to follow along with me, you can grab the code in the description. But let's go ahead and just create a, a sample component. I'm going to come over here and just create a new co components folder. And then inside here, let's just do like sample.tsx. I'm using TypeScript here, but you don't have to. All right, so in this case, what I want to do is go ahead and import something from React. We're going to import create element. This is what JSX uses behind the scenes to generate an element. So what actually happens in React is that you pass a bunch of data to this create element function and it generates this in the virtual DOM. So for instance, I can come in here and say like sample or something like that. I'll just do create element. And then I need to pass it a few different things. You can see here, I need to pass it a type and then I need to pass it um, different properties that may be available to it and any children that are there as well. So for instance, I could come in here and say that this needs to be the type of div. The properties, I might wanna give this an ID of, I don't know, like sample. And then next I can pass it any children. In this case, I can just pass it a text node. This is a React div, something like that. And that's what's actually gonna show up on the page. Now, so we can see this, let's go ahead and export default sample like this. And then what I'll do is jump over here to my app. And for right now, let's just comment out all of this. And then I can go ahead and just drop in the sample right here. And if I go ahead and hit enter, it will actually drop in all of that. And you can see up top here, it's imported this component and then it's dropped it directly in here. Well, actually it's just the rendered HTML at this point. So if I save it here, you'll notice it says this is a React div. And if we were to go ahead and inspect this, this shows us that it's a div, it has the ID of sample and the child of this is a React div. So behind the scenes, React is basically keeping track between the virtual DOM and what it's actually showing us. All right, so why is that important? Well, if we want access to the actual div in the DOM, we need to have some kind of reference to that rather than just connecting to the virtual DOM. And that's where use ref comes in handy. So for instance, if we come back out this way and I uncomment out all of this right here, you can see that we're actually using use ref in a couple of different places. So I'm saying, hey, I need to have the input and I need to have the dialogue. I want reference to both of those. And so I can use this use ref hook. If you're not used to TypeScript, you can ignore all this, but basically what I'm doing is then attaching it to this ref property. And what this does is it connects the virtual DOM in a more direct way to the actual DOM that's being updated. So that's what I need to actually actually have connected. Now what I can do is run a use effect hook that runs once on page load that then says, hey, does this input ref.current exist? In other words, does the actual DOM node exist? If so, go ahead and focus it. And this is one of the biggest things that's hard to kind of get your mind around if you come from vanilla JavaScript is that you're not working directly with the DOM. You're working with this secondary DOM, this virtual DOM, and it is then updating the DOM. So this is why we need to have refs at all. Now, why would we use a forward ref? Well, you can see here that what I've got is this working here. If I type my name and hit submit, you can see it pops up this model. Why is that happening? If I come over here, you'll see that I've got an on submit handler. This submit handler then, not only does it prevent the default, it checks to make sure that the dialogue actually is on the page in the DOM itself. And then it uses this show modal function, which comes by default with these dialogue elements now in kind of recent versions of HTML and pops this thing up. So that's all happening automatically because of these links between the virtual DOM and the actual DOM. Now this works fine and well for a really, really simple project here, but what happens if I want this input or this form or the dialogue itself to be extracted out to its own component? Well, this is where I need to forward the ref because I need to control it from the parent. However, I still need access to the actual DOM node, not the virtual DOM. So let's go ahead and grab all of this form right here. Let's get rid of that. Then I'm gonna come over to the sidebar again and add another one. We'll say form.tsx. And then let's go ahead and just drop all of this directly in here. Now that I've got all this in here, I can just pass in a handle submit. I'll pass in the name and I'll pass in set name. And I want the state to live up above because the dialogue also needs access to this name. So we're gonna keep that in the parent component. So for right now, we're gonna ignore this input ref and let me come back over this way. If we just import the form like this, we can then pass each of those items down. So we've got the handle submit, we've got the name and we've got set name. 
Now you'll notice here it's erroring out, but let me come back over here and just remove this ref and you see now it is working. Now for some reason I have your name name, we don't need that, all right, just your name right there. And now I can enter this in and I can hit enter and everything should work as expected. Now the reason this is working is because out here, I'm just running this handle submit event. It now has access to the dialog ref. The dialog ref has access to the name because the state uh, lives up here. So hopefully that makes sense, but you'll notice that we've lost something. If I refresh the page, it's no longer automatically selecting this. That's because we don't have access to the actual DOM node. This is where forward ref comes in handy. So first of all, let's just do this as if this was JavaScript. I'll show you how to type this as well. Now you might think what you could do is come in here and just add input ref like this, but you can't actually pass refs like props. That's not how they work. So instead what we need to do is wrap this entire function here in the forward ref. So I'll say forward ref, then I'm just gonna wrap here and down here. So the entire function will be wrapped in forward ref. The very first thing you're going to pass in here is the actual props object, which you've already done, so that works just fine. The second thing you're going to pass in is the ref. So you can name this whatever you want. So I'll just pass this in as ref, and then we'll pass this in down here as ref as well. Now, while you can't accept it as a prop, you essentially pass it as a prop. So if I come back over this way, we come in here, I can now pass in the ref and point this to input ref. And now if I refresh here, you'll see that not only does it reload, but now it actually selects this automatically, focuses it automatically as soon as the page loads. Now the beauty here is I can abstract this format anywhere I want to use it and just forward along that ref. The parent still gets to control it and the child essentially delivers it up to the parent by way of this forward ref wrapper. Now in TypeScript, if you were going to type this, you just pass this in right like this. The first thing you pass in is actually the, the input type that you're tying this ref to. So in this case, this would be an HTML input element. And the second thing you pass in is whatever the props are. So we'll just call this uh, form props. Now I can come up here and I guess we can just have this as an interface, we'll say form props. And I'll just go ahead and paste those in because this isn't really about TypeScript. But you can see here that now I'm actually getting everything typed correctly. If I come back over here, all the errors should be gone as well. So why did we do that? Well, what we were trying to do is get access to the actual input so that we could select it on page load. I wanted the parent to have control of that ref, but in order to kind of abstract the component, I had to forward the ref basically down to that child, and then the child can point it to the right element. Now I've given you a second example here so you can try it yourself. And I really would encourage you to stop the video and try to walk through it yourself, give it a good go, and then if you get stuck, come back here. Okay, so hopefully you had a good go of it. Let me go ahead and grab this right here. I'll come over here and just add this as a dialogue component. TSX, and we'll go ahead and scaffold this out and just drop all this here. So as you might remember, I can come in here and pass in, first of all, the props. This would be the name and also the close modal function. Then I also need to pass in the ref, which we'll just call ref in this case, and I'll pass it right here. And then we need to wrap this entire thing in a forward ref. Now I'll come back over this way and go ahead and close this out and we'll add the dialogue like this. And I'll pass in the name. I'll pass in close modal and I'll pass in the ref which is the dialog ref. So if I say this, this should work the exact same way. If I come over here and hit Chris, now it shows it as Chris and I can close it down and everything should work properly. Now let's go ahead and come back over here now and type this one more time just to kind of get practice doing that. The very first thing you're gonna do is the type of thing that the ref is on. So in this case, this would be an HTML dialog element. The second thing would be whatever props you're passing in. So I'll just call this the dialog props. And then once again, let's go ahead and come up here and define an interface. And just like that, everything is working. Now, let's think about one other thing you might wanna do. So you might say, hey, I always am going to have this title here. I'm always gonna have the button, but this might be dynamic. How might we account for that? Well, what you could do is have children right here. And this essentially is like a slot if you're used to working in frameworks that use that concept. So what we're gonna do is replace this name here with children. This is just a React node. And now what we can do is if I come back over this way, instead of closing this thing off, let's go ahead and get rid of this name. We'll actually use it as a wrapper for whatever we want as the children. This will just fall into that single little slot. Now I have on my clipboard exactly what we used to have in there. And you can see now I don't have to pass down the name. This string is already in this upper component, this parent component. So why not just leave it there? So now I should be able to come in here again and hit Chris and whatever I have will be right here. This is always going to be here. The close button will always be here, but I can basically dynamically change out what shows in the dialogue. And you could do this on a variety of states or pass it in in different pages in different ways. Well, I hope thinking through how React works was helpful in thinking through why we need refs in the first place. And then to pass that ref down gives the parent all the control you need and allows the child to be its own little separate component. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear it. Thanks so much again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.